Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 29. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. As it is November, we are having another sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium. So if you've been waiting for that, make sure you check it out and you can lock in the lower rate and we'll have that sale run through the duration of this month. You will get access to weekly reports. We have three premium videos per week. We also, of course, have a website where you can access all sorts of indicators like on-chain metrics for a lot of different cryptocurrencies, logarithmic regression, return on investment. We have a lot of macroverse indicators things for stocks as well, derivatives data, and social metrics. So make sure you check it out. Again, you can lock in that lower rate. Now, on the first of every month, we do a video where we talk about the entire asset class of crypto and the market capitalization of it. I know the title is just Bitcoin, but again, it's the total crypto market capitalization. As of November 1st, 2022, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at a modest 1.01 trillion. The fair value is actually a bit higher at 1.85 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 45%. Now, it is certainly easy to get lost in the day to day movements of crypto. We'll go from one day things look bullish, the next day things might look bearish. And of course, our sentiment can ultimately change on a dime. But as I said last video at the very, you know, the first of October, it is better to look at macro movements so that you can better identify when does it make sense to slowly scale into crypto versus when would it make sense to slowly scale out of crypto. Okay, so currently we have an undervaluation of approximately 45%. That does not mean we cannot go more undervalued than we currently are. If you look back at the last two market cycles, we eventually did touch the lower green regression line. We are currently not at that point yet. With that said, if you were to look at the last two cycles and bear markets, you could argue that we might just go sideways until we hit lower regression line, like we did in 2015 and like we did in 2019 and early 2020. Of course, there always is a chance that we just go straight down to it, and I think we need to be prepared for both of those scenarios. Now, what is the fair value? Again, we said it's 1.85 trillion, but why? Well, the red line is a logarithmic regression function. And the reason we use it is because it shows more accelerated gains early on, and then those gains tend to diminish as a function of time. This is where we get our diminishing returns. I was very adamant in the last cycle that we would in fact experience diminishing returns and in fact we did i mean crypto only went up to around 69 or bitcoin only went up to sixty-nine thousand dollars, and the total asset class only went up to about three trillion as opposed to going um, much higher than that i was hoping it was going to go higher than three trillion but you can see that we did not quite make it back up to the top of the regression line and a lot of that is arguably because of how quickly the macroeconomic conditions worsened now, one of the things that I, I also wanted to talk about, again, is the fair value is a monotonically increasing function. It does not go down ever. And the reason is because it generally assumes that there's going to be growing adoption of crypto as a function of time. And so why should it ever go back down, right? We assume that the fair value goes back, you know, just generally goes up. But it raises the question, you know, why does it, why don't we just follow the regression line? You know, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, rather than following the trend line exactly, which would arguably be a lot easier method if, if, if the actual market cap of all of crypto just followed the, the red line, we would just slowly see our portfolios go up. And I'm sure a lot of people would like that. But for better or for worse, crypto experiences, experiences these boom and bust cycles where we go through periods of extreme overvaluation, and, and periods of extreme undervaluation. And again, the whole idea is to generally scale into the market when we're undervalued and scale out of the market when we're overvalued. That is the general idea of, of this chart. And as I said in October, when you're undervalued by 40, 50%, it is a generally decent time to slowly come into the market. It doesn't mean that we can't go lower, and I, I do, I do, cont you know, I do contend that the risk of going lower is going to be there for quite some time, especially considering we are 
likely going to head into a recession at some point in 2023. So we could have a scare, you know, one final scare ahead of us, potentially, before we actually get back into a, another bull market. But that is something that I think everyone should consider. If you look at this chart, there's actually been a number of, of times where we actually hit the peak on the upper regression man. And there's also been some times where we come up to a point somewhere in between. So for instance, in 2013, we had a double peak cycle. The first peak did not quite make it all the way up to the top regression band, but the second peak did. In the 2021 bull market that, that will finalize in 2021, we saw two peaks. So it ended up being a double peak cycle, which is what we suggested we would see. But unfortunately, again, the second peak was tempered and ultimately the return that it saw and it, and it sort of stopped right around that three trillion dollar mark and then we've drawn the comparisons between crypto peaking out at around three trillion and of course the pop of the dot-com bubble back in 2000 that also peaked at approximately three trillion and ever since we've been just following the slow decline of the cryptocurrency asset class but i will say as as the asset class continues to evolve and mature I do think eventually we will go back into a bull market, even if it takes another six to 12 months of chopping around the lower the lower ranges to ultimately see that come to fruition. You know, the other thing that we can look at is the percent difference between the market cap of crypto and the red logarithmic regression trend line. Okay, so if you take the percent difference between those two, this is what you get. The general idea is that whenever we are completely undervalued and a better time to come into the asset class is all the way down here. And when we're overvalued, it's generally a good time to slowly scale out of the market. So you can see these sort of two peaks that we had in, in 2021 are more similar to the tempered peak over here in 2013. We did not have a, a major blow off top like we have seen in prior cycles and said it was a longer distribution phase. I look at this chart and I, I think it's always worthwhile to look at where have major bottoms been in the past. And you can see that there was a major bottom at around the current levels all the way back in 2012. Although the last two bear markets eventually bottomed at around 65% undervaluation as opposed to where we currently are, which is around 50% or 45% undervaluation. One thing to consider in that, as I said, though, is that we will become more undervalued even if we go sideways for the next year. Okay, so if I were to draw a yellow line all the way across, you can see that the asset class, if it were to go sideways, basically until the next Bitcoin halving, okay, if the asset class were to go sideways until the next Bitcoin halving, then we would hit the lower regression band by early 2024, which would actually put us at around 65% undervaluation. Interestingly enough, right before the 2020 halving, is when we hit the lower regression band, okay? So keeping in mind that could eventually happen, especially with the recent inversion of the yield curve. We had an inversion of the yield curve in 2019, and then we saw we saw the asset class of, you know, we saw the cryptocurrency asset class plummet once we actually hit that recession. Of course, the Fed printed our way out of it, and we came out of this fairly quickly, but we also had the inversion of the yield curve again recently, especially with the three month and the 10 year, and so there is likely going to be a recession at some point over here, and you could see a similar type of scare. One thing to consider is that after, whenever the cryptocurrency market cap bottoms, we typically eventually test that bottom again later on. You can see over here in 2015, I think it actually went slightly lower. Uh, in, in 2020, it was actually a slightly higher level. So I think that's something we need to be on the lookout for as we make our way further into this, um, you know, this, this cycle. So... Again, right now, the asset class is sitting at just over $1 trillion. We're currently undervalued by about 45%. And so, you know, it makes you think about what are your long-term expectations for the cryptocurrency asset class. Unfortunately, in the short term, it is anyone's guess. And I mean, I think the prevailing opinion right now by a lot of people is that it is short-term bullish. We'll see if that's the case. The Fed will have um, a, you know, an announcement tomorrow for us where they're going to raise interest rates again. Market is currently saying it's most likely to be 75 basis points. So we'll see if that's true. If it is true, that would get us to about 4%, that'll get us to 4% for the Fed funds rate. But the terminology, the tone that they take after the meeting will be, or after, after the, 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 the release of their statement will be very telling on the short-term implications of crypto. If they're dovish, you could see a push higher above 
say some of these resistance levels like Bitcoin sitting just below the 20 week SMA. If on the other hand, they come out hawkish, then it would be more likely that you would see a rejection at the 20 week SMA by Bitcoin. And we could go back down and, and retest the prior lows at the very least. So as always, these are important considerations to think about and, and to remember that over the macro scale, right over the macro scale, when you look at this chart, the whole idea is to l scale out when we're at high levels over the fair value. That's when you want to scale out. And when you're at low values under the fair value, that's where you generally want to scale in. Okay, that's at least what history tells us. Now, we could always talk about the idea of we've been in QE for the last 10 years. What's going to happen now that we're, we're in a period of, you know, quantitative tightening. And that's why I think it makes sense to, to be open to the idea of us going to lower levels, right? You know, ultimately seeing a 60% undervaluation before all is said and done. But again, in the short term, it's anyone's guess. So I, I do think this chart is extremely helpful in identifying where the asset class is overall. What are the general expectations as we get further into um, the current cycle? And does it make sense to scale in at these levels? Does it make sense to, you know, to wait? Of course, that's ultimately up to you. But all I can show you is what history has, has previously taught us as to where the asset class is currently sitting with respect to the fair value, okay? So hopefully, hopefully this is inf informative to everyone. And I, I wanted to, to remind people, and this is, you know, I, I leave you guys with this note every single time, is that I would ultimately like to see the asset class go to 10 trillion. Right? This is this is sort of the ultimate goal, and, and I hope we can make it there in the next bull market. There is a chance that we don't make it there again, especially if inflation stays high. So my hope is that inflation will come back down before it's time for the next bull market so that we can so that we can actually hopefully get to that ten trillion dollar milestone. But as I've said before, ten trillion is the ultimate goal, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends. Remember, we do have the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium, so check that out if you if you want to uh, get access to the website and, and all the indicators that, that I have. You also get trading view indicators as well. You can find a link to that in the description below or in the pinned comment, intothecryptoverse.com. We're also having a sale on the t-shirts, the merchandise on the website as well. And if you want to get 20% off, you can find a link to that down in the description below as well uh, and the code attached to it. So make sure you check that out and I will see you guys next time. Bye.